A new temperature pattern and overall weather setup needs to be watched, and this video has what you need to know coming up in the next 10 minutes. I want to start today's update with a look at the jet stream 15 to 20,000 feet on up into the sky and how it is going to impact patterns closer to the surface that I'll be discussing throughout the rest of the update. Let's go ahead and push things into the future with this European model as we go out of our Thursday when I'm recording this and into our Friday, May 23rd of 2025. And the main thing to note about the orientation of the jet stream as we finish this week is the fact that as you go from parts of the northwest U.S. and places like Montana and Wyoming through the central plains and then down to the southeast, what direction is that jet stream going from the northwest down to the southeast? That is a big trough, and it's the backside of some troughing that is already moving off the east coast. We're on the leading edge of that. We've seen severe weather over the last several days. Now we're on the backside of it where we're in a northwest to southeast flow regime in the jet stream, and that allows for especially areas along and then to the north of this piece of jet stream energy to be cooler than average as well as drier in terms of conditions. Meanwhile, to the south of the jet stream flow, there will still be the possibility for some showers and storms, and that's exactly why places like the Plains, where we're going to get instability to move north, will continue to get some shower and storm chances as we push out of the end of this week and into the weekend. As the jet stream continues flowing strongly from the central U.S. down to the southeast, the general zones that are down below that strongest flow are going to see the flow of moisture from the south to the north, and that means that for parts of the southern and central plains, some parts of the lower and mid-Mississippi Valley, over into the Ohio Valley, and eventually the southeast, out of the end of this week, and then through the weekend, we will get some expanding storm chances. Not widespread severe weather, but definitely some potential for storms as we remain on the moisture-ridden side of the jet stream. Meanwhile, to the north of the jet stream, we will continue to watch cooler than average temperatures flowing down, and about the northeastern quadrant of the country will pretty much be completely engulfed in below average temperatures and nearly fully dry conditions, at least through the end of the weekend with this type of regime. Things will change a bit by the time we go towards next week, as you'll see on the future radar in just a minute, though, because as the jet stream begins to loosen up and we see the jet stream winds to relax up in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere, some of those storm chances that will be compressed down into the southern U.S. as we go through the next few days will begin to expand a little bit further north into next week, and we will see some messy systems with at least daily pop-up thunderstorms, some of which may be severe, and we could even get an elevated chance for that getting closer to the east coast with a new front by the end of next week. With that being said, I want to go ahead and and use the future radar from the European model to show which areas will be active and which areas will be drier as we go through the next several days as a result of the jet stream regime I was just talking about. Let's start as we finish this week and go into our Friday, May 23rd of 2025, where especially impulses moving through the central part of the jet stream in the country will be allowing for some severe weather to get going with the storms that fire up as a result of daytime heating exiting parts of Colorado and Wyoming, and then extending to the southeast from there, at least to the Red River Valley, and then especially from parts of Montana all the way down to Missouri and in points in between. These zones will be fair game for some storms at some point through the day Friday and into our Friday night, so be on the lookout as these crash down from the northwest to the southeast for them to get more severe as the day rolls on. Kansas and its surrounding zones could be the peak of our severe weather threat along into the south of that jet stream energy on our Friday, and we'll likely do it all over again with some storms there in, in the central plains and high plains on our Saturday, while we see some of the ones from our Friday and Friday night crashing down in a less severe fashion, but possibly with some stronger ones into parts of the lower Mississippi Valley. Keep in mind that as we continue to see the jet stream regime moving with some impulses from the northwest to the southeast, we will see more zones along and to the south of the jet stream at least getting some pop-up variety thunderstorms by the time we get towards Sunday. Sunday, that is going to include a majority of Americans. You'll probably see a dark cloud near you, even if you don't get a storm, from the high plains and the west central parts of the plains, through the southern plains, through the lower Mississippi Valley, all the way to the southeast. It will be a very active time as we go towards our Sunday afternoon and evening. Some of these storms could at least produce flooding, even if they don't produce severe weather, from parts of Kansas and Missouri over to parts of the Tennessee Valley, especially talking to you guys for that Sunday time frame. Meanwhile, if you're not in this area of storminess, it will be on the very dry side as we go into our Sunday. The upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Northeast, and then back over to the West Coast and some parts of the Four Corners region. A very different story with some cloudless skies in many of those zones as well as we go through our Sunday. As we go out of Sunday into Monday, we'll put more storms into place on the southern and south central sides of the jet stream energy that we'll be moving on through. Once again, that's going to include the high plains, the southern plains, parts of the southeast U.S. And then eventually as the jet stream relaxes, as I mentioned, it will into next week, we will see more storms allowed to move to the north into zones that have been dry. Temperatures will still be cooler than average in a lot of these zones, but we'll get a better chance for some at least showers by Tuesday into parts of the Midwest, stretching on up into some parts of the Ohio Valley. Even the Mid-Atlantic could get some showers and storms by the time we go out of Tuesday and into our Wednesday with low pressure pushing through. And generally, as we go deeper through next week, it looks like more areas 
through the southern and southeastern as well as the eastern parts of the country will get in on some shower and storm chances before we maybe get a front to push some of that offshore as I mentioned by the end of next week into the weekend. Before we talk more about temperatures I want to show you which zones will have the best chance for isolated to scattered severe weather over the coming days starting with a look at my custom ONW severe weather scale graphic for the potential of strong storms to severe storms on our Friday May 23rd and Friday night. Right underneath that strongest jet stream energy is where the best chance for severe storms will be. So exiting far eastern parts of Wyoming and then especially northern and eastern parts of Colorado and then coming down through the central and some parts of the southern plains is going to be where we get that peak threat. Let's talk about what each of these zones means. If you're in that bright green level one, you shouldn't be too worried, but a severe storm or two cannot be ruled out here or there. So just be mindful of that possible threat. The better chance for severe weather will be in the level two and level three zones where isolated to scattered severe storms look likely. As you get in that yellow zone exiting southern Nebraska getting through a lot of Kansas and into northeastern Oklahoma in particular. That is where the most likely corridor for hail and wind will be with an isolated tornado potential also more maximized in those zones. While we could see severe weather start to expand further southeast even to the lower Mississippi Valley in the southeast out of Saturday into Sunday, the peak risks will likely continue to be with the most instability that we get and that's going to be in the south central plains. Here's a look at what machine learning is highlighting for a severe weather potential as we go towards our Saturday for example. Kansas, Oklahoma, and surrounding zones having the peak threat according to this guidance around that time time frame with a 15 to 30 percent chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a point being projected right now. This machine learning guidance from Colorado State does the same thing for our Sunday, May 25th. While we could see isolated severe weather again extending further east, it looks like Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and surrounding zones will continue to be the focal threat at least through the end of the weekend out of these storms riding under the jet stream. With that being said, I think it is important that I now end this video with an in-depth discussion about temperatures as some of these will be very cool and could even result in some frost as we finish May which is crazy to say. Here's a look at what's going on into our Friday morning, or at least what's projected by the National Digital Forecast Database. While we are expected to be in the 50s and 60s to the south side of that northwest to southeast jet stream flow as you get into the south central parts of the country and the southeast, it will not be the same story as you go on up into the north central plains. And if you're especially along into the north of this line that I'm hashing out, many zones will be below the 40 degree mark, and that could lead to a risk for some dangerous frost that could impact your especially sensitive vegetation if you have planted for the spring in these zones. So make sure you're covering your plants accordingly if you live in some parts of the Dakotas, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, as well as the Northeast in particular on Friday morning as a result of these cold temperatures. We won't even really warm up that much in those zones for the afternoon in comparison to where we should be for this time of the year. Many zones should be warming well through the 60s and into the 70s. We're going to see 50s and some low to mid 60s over a lot of that quarter I was just talking about. Even in some of the stormy zones in the plains, some 70s in place as we will be right along that dividing line as the jet stream surges through. Down in the far southern U.S., though, closer to the U.S.-Mexico border, the Gulf of America corridor there as well, and then as you get along the Gulf Coast, 80s and 90s, and even some near triple-digit heat that will especially impact Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas in terms of the highest temperatures. What about in Saturday morning? 70s down there in the southern U.S. for lows. Meanwhile, on up in the border with Canada, as well as in the northeast U.S., plenty more 30s and 40s to go around, and especially in this corridor, to the, along into the north of this line I'm drawing. Once again, I'd be concerned about some isolated frost that could be a concern as you get on up there through these far northeastern zones of the U.S. What about in those zones for highs on our Saturday? Once again, more 50s and 60s, a very strange pattern for this time of the year. And we'll see 60s for highs all the way as far south as Missouri, Kentucky, and Tennessee with rain and storms trying to filter into some of those zones through the day. That's why our severe weather threat will generally be lower as you shift out of the plains because we will see less instability as we really see generally cooler temperatures along that jet stream flow. Sunday morning will be warm at some 50s and 60s over the South Central Corridor. Meanwhile, further north, once again, 30s and 40s and a frost concern, particularly in Wisconsin and Michigan. Sunday, pretty much playing the same temperature game all over again. And then by the time we go towards Monday, we'll see a little bit more of a shift to as we see the jet stream relaxing to where some of our temperatures in the 50s for morning lows will expand back to the north a little bit, meaning we'll be closer to 50 as opposed to 40 in central Illinois on Monday morning. Same will go through central Indiana and Ohio. And then by the afternoon hours, we will see more 60s to near 70 degree readings all the way on up to the north central U.S., the northeast. Definitely a bit of a recovery, and that will only continue as we go out on Monday. And then you can see by Tuesday, we will begin to recover more and more each day, a allowing for those thunderstorms as well to expand for the northeast as the jet stream relaxes. With that being said, that is all I have for today's update video. I'll probably provide another update as we go into the weekend, but for now, if you want to catch that update and you have not already hit the button, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button down below and turning on notifications so you don't miss my future forecasts. Also, of course, you can check out the weather bell link down in the description of this video for a free trial to the model maps that I use. 
With that being said, though, that's all I have for today's update. Thank you very much for joining me. God bless you all. Have a good one.